Hey guys, it's Harry here from Team Panoramic and today is something a bit different to the average video where I just show off the combat robot project that I get up to and it's going to answer a lot of the questions that I have been getting. For example, how to build an outweight robot, what goes into an outweight robot and the materials used to build an outweight robot. And those questions are going to be answered today with how to build a UK outweight fighting robot. Alright, first thing regarding the drive setup for, to build an outweight robot. In the past few years there have been quite a few tutorials regarding this particular subject using servos quite like this one which I'm holding now, the Tower Pro SG90, because back in the day these were the cheaper option for building an outweight robot as opposed to these motors which I will go in which I will go back to a bit later. But there are two problems with this. A you have to hack them to rotate 360 degrees and the big issue there is you'll end up with quite a slow drive setup depending on what wheels you're using. If you use wheels say this size then you'll end up with quite a slow drive and if you use quite bigger wheels, let's say about a 60 or 70 millimeter diameter, you will get something quite nippy but no, nowhere near as fast as the ant weights that we have today. The other option for these servos is speed hacking them, however because of how fast they will end up going, they will go just so fast it will be just uncontrollable and you could end up driving off the arena and I should know that based from experience. Plus, depending on what method you use to speed hack, these could end up burning out. So I tend to stay clear of these for a drive setup. Now going back to these motors I brought up, these are micro metal gear motors that come in different ratios and are sold in various places around the world and quite a few years ago you'd most likely end up spending around what 12 pound for just one of these but now they can be bought for just a few pounds from some sellers i even got a 10 pack of these ones with a 30 to 1 gear ratio new on ebay for 30 pounds i'll leave a link to it in the description for speed controller options here are three examples of what i use there is a, another one but it's made by somebody who makes them privately at the outweight events uh, i think it's like solely just to keep the numbers down or something the first one is a Das Micro 2S6A. This is quite a cheap option as it only costs around £12 and sold on a website called Banggood. Yeah, quite a name that. It's a decent little controller, however it does have a high power usage and with high power servos it seems to just randomly cut out when a servo is operated. If you're using this for a rammer bot, then it's absolutely fine. But if you're building a flipper with this controller, then I would recommend using either this servo I brought up earlier, the Tower Pro SG90 or a Metal Gear version called the MG90. The flipping power won't be great but it will at least do when using this controller. Now both these two speed controllers are the Nano 2 built by Rory from Team Nuts and come in two different versions. This one has to be connected to a receiver and costs £20 whereas this one has a Lemon RX receiver built in and costs either £30 without motors or £40 with motors pre-soldered and ready to run. Keep in mind it will only work with transmitters that have DSM2 or DSMX technology which I'll get to later. Also might be worth mentioning is the blue heat shrink is my own as I've had to take the original stuff off to fix some wiring. If you want to get hold of one I'll link you to Rory's document in the description but with the interest he's been getting since Robot Wars came back you may be waiting quite a while in the commission queue. I'm not sure what his waiting time is like at the moment but last time I asked him it was something like five to six weeks. Maybe a bit different now or probably will be after this tutorial but not really sure at this time. So between these three controllers I would highly recommend this version of the Nano 2 simply down to the control it gives, the space it will save with the receiver built in and in general a, a really good ESC for amp weights. Also something worth mentioning, the DAS Micro will require the wires to be soldered on yourself and neither of these controllers will have a switch like this one fitted and by fighting robot rules there must be an external way of um, instantly powering and turning off the robot a removable link will normally come into this but with amp weights and anything below that such as flea weights and nano weights a switch will be fine. Now I've already talked about the SG90 servos and the Metal Gear version so let's just get that one out of the way. This is the servo that I have been using in nearly all of my amp weight flippers and lifters an Aerostar AS170MG Metal Gear servo costing £4.32 from Hobby King 
but there is another server that has been popping up in UK and where it's called the Turner G-S306G-HV, a high power server that has really helped flippers pack a punch. I've yet to get hold of one myself, but we'll do another video when I'm able to get one. Now, that server costs nearly £20, which is around four times as much as this Aerostar one, which is a good servo if you happen to be on a budget. Also, what I would highly recommend when it comes to these servos is shortening the wires like I've done here, just soldering and heat shrink put in there. So it will save space inside and it won't get all tangled up with anything. Now earlier in the video I mentioned something about DSMX or DSM2 technology. This is where our transmitter comes in. Probably the finest example of this is the Spectrum DX6i, which is commonly used in the sport of robot combat. Most of my fellow roboteers happen to have this one too. But this transmitter has now been discontinued and replaced with a newer model called the Spectrum DX6e, which can be more expensive. So it would be worth looking around for DSMX transmitters on the likes of eBay and Hobby King. Now receiver wise for your transmitter, uh, the one I've got in my Antweight replica of Apollo Launchpad is an older version of a Orange RX receiver from Hobby King, but the newer version it's replaced is quite unreliable. I've had a few die down in my machines and just gone through quite a few of them just randomly biting the dust. And this one, which is built into a Peter Waller board, is a Lemon RX receiver and they are available with pins or without pins. For the battery, I tend to use either one of these two types of the 6 volt NIM battery packs from Component Shop, depending on what I am building. The smaller one is 120 milliamps, and the slightly bigger one is 210 milliamps. However, most amp weights tend to use the lithium polymer battery packs, most notably some of the particular Turner G Nanotech models. So here are the three materials that I have used throughout my years of building amp weights. Starting off with HDPE, standing for high density polyethylene. I mostly use 2mm thick of the stuff and occasionally 1mm and 6mm in some places. Although soft, depending on thickness, this can be a really durable plastic and can be cut with tin snips and bent to shape with net designs like for boxes. However, because it is a soft plastic, it can be hard to get it right if bending it into shape as for me it has been finding a way to bend its way back out again. Moving on to a hard plastic, 1.5mm polycarbonate. This I find much better to use than HDP as I have been able to use the same building method but this won't bend out of shape and has held up well when fighting spinners. And finally my most recent build method, 3D printing my own chassis. This one for example I modelled in SketchUp, exported it as an SDL file, added it to my 3D printer software UpStudio and printed it on my UpPlus2. This method can hold up really well depending on four things, how well you've modelled it, choosing a solid infill, probably layer thickness for a smoother job and the material you've chosen. For this one I've printed it with ABS, but in some cases of 3D printing with this there can be some signs of warping, sometimes it's not noticeable and doesn't really make that big of an effect, but some cases of some of the models that I've tried printing it with, it can be quite bad. So if you do experience warping when 3D printing, there are many places on the web that you can go and get advice on what can be done about it. Right, for wheels, the first example which I commonly use is a 32mm diameter, 7mm thick wheel. The second one is a Solobotics aluminium wheel, which isn't really a light option and has caused me weight problems depending on what I was building. And finally, there is my own 3D printed wheels with rubber sleeving as tyres. And I may also be making a stock of these and then selling them on eBay, so keep an eye out. As you can see, all the components needed to build a simple wedge flipper. Receiver, battery, speed controller, power switch, weapon servo, motors, wheels, and something else I forgot to bring up in this tutorial. Your motor mounts. Easy to fit and bolt onto your chassis. And these particular ones can be bought on eBay for just a couple of pounds actually. Thought that didn't go on. For this ant weight I have used two of the materials. The main chassis is my own design on Google SketchUp 3D printed with ABS. Along with the hinges fitted on with some nuts, bolts and some washers. 
The flipper plate is made with 1.5mm polycarbonate bent to shape and screwed onto the hinges. Also in the end, I've cut a piece of the polycarbonate to help the servo power the flipper better and I've linked it to the plate with elastic from a rubber band and fitted some nuts, bolts and washers. So, after all that, let's see how it will run. Self right test. And another one. It works, but can it flip? Seems to be quite forgetful during this tutorial, but it's something I forgot to do. Acetate, this thin plastic, a lot of the time will help flippers help get underneath the other robots easier, so I would highly recommend using this stuff. So there you have it, the making of a UK Antway robot. Hopefully this video helps and good luck building out there.